gain experience in you once you've done the, the walks a couple of times you know exactly where you're going so you don't have to double back and do two and a half journeys <laughs> instead of one right back to awkwardness where there's tree roots and the pathways are uneven and on a slope but they're not too bad at the moment because it's dry so they're not as horrendous as they usually are like so this here you know it's on a slope and bits of flat bores and it'll just be slippy right so how i got here people um i drove from south shields along the a194m um, from white mare pool roundabout i dropped down to Chest the chesty street roundabout and kept left on the a167m and drove right along that and then drove through durham uh, past the pub called the honest lawyer continued on up and then turned right on the road that took us into the little village of Tudho, that's T-U-D-H-O-E. Then I drove through Tudho, got to the big roundabout and turned right onto the A688. Then I followed the A688 all the way down to Barnet Castle. Then I got to the stone bridge, crossed over, traffic, it's traffic light controlled, then turned left and followed that road round to meet the uh, A66. So then I crossed straight over through the central reservation, turned right, drove a thousand yards up and then turned left straight away. And according to the GPS, it's, it's on Rutherford Lane, which then becomes Stang Lane, about um, half a mile up, further on. So I didn't know that. And because I've got the new software on, it's, it's uploaded 6.80, in the latest maps of 2025, um, the, I don't know, it just seems very, very clear, more clearer when she's talking and giving directions. The female voice on the recording. And um, I'm getting um, better warning of turnings coming up for roundabouts and that. For a couple of the sections where I was coming along the A167 through Durham, um, it was saying like when you get the roundabout, take the third or fourth, there was no roundabout. So it's still not spot on, but it's a lot better. At one point it was trying to tell us to turn around the roundabout and double back, do a U-bend to take a turn off which would take us in the wrong direction, I thought. So it's a good job, and now I'm gone. So I only rely on my GPS if I'm in a totally strange area or in a different town or city that I've never been before. So I haven't got a clue um, through the streets and stuff like that. That's what they're good for. But obviously, because I know how to get here from South Shields, because I've done it thousands of times, you don't really need a GPS. But I just wanted to try it to see uh, what the new features are with the new software and uh, what's new on the on the maps to tell you what you, you can find, like I say, ATMs. That's the latest one. So it's good, obviously it tells you the time on the screen. It tells you I've got um I've just bought a brand new Garmin it's for the Novi um traffic lead power lead um with an antenna that you plug into it but you i didn't need it as soon as i plugged it into the cigarette lighter and put the the new uh, garmin power lead in it um come on the screen uploading traffic software so that's good i don't need to pair it up with my ability phone and that's another thing and all i don't like them when you they're trying to get you to have your phone with you 24 7 eight days a week and I don't like that so I don't want to be pairing up with my phone and then answering your phone when you're driving which it does if you pair it up right up we go and the other thing is what they try and do 
to get you to have technology around you 24 bloody seven. Um, these new ones, 99% of them, all come with Alexa involved in it. Now that is just AI, which is monitoring you where you are, where, where you're driving to. It's probably recording your conversations. Um, so I had the Drive Sport 61 and I had the Drive Smart 65 with Alexa in it. So I gave that away to my best friend. I updated uh, the software to the latest map for him now. As I say, there you go, Jimmy. You can have that. So that was the Drive Smart 65. And obviously it's got the same software and map updates as mine now. But I like mine, me Drive Smart 61, because I'm used to the commands that you give it, like um, you say it to a voice command and then you tell it history, traffic, weather, volume, up and down. It's brilliant. All without having to take your, um, your face away from where you're driving mm -hmm. and look across to the Jeep. You just use your voice and it changes things while you're driving along so you don't have to look at it. And it's working perfectly now. Every time I say like voice command, it pops up straight away. So obviously you say, if you've got to your destination, uh, when you put it in your postcode, you just tell it voice command, stop route, and it'll repeat stop route. And then um, you just tell it the next destination or put in the postcode or where you're going next. And you can do it like all us without even touching it or looking at it. It's all done by voice, which is the whole point to make them safer for driving purposes. And like I say, because I know every command to give me Drive Smart 61, I prefer to keep that one. And it hasn't got Alexa built into it. That's exactly what I don't want. There's um, the Drive Smart 82 now, but unfortunately that's got um, Alexa built into it as well, but it's got an eight inch screen instead of seven inch. So it's, it's the next generation up. But I tend to find, I mean, can you imagine an eight inch screen on your dash? It's gonna obstruct your view out your, your windscreen a little bit more, so. Yes, nice that you can see it clearly without your glasses on if it's a big screen, but you're, you're blocking out your view, like I say, um, through your windscreen when you're driving along. So it's got a good point and bad points. But the, um, the other thing that's wrong with it is the price tank. With them, be, with them being the new and latest ones, that ask horrendous prices for them. And there's no, no different about them. They do the same thing, same software, same voice, same telling you where to go. And, um, but like I say, it's just a bigger screen. So you're paying a lot of money for a bigger screen. Right, so I've got a a little bit more to go along these awkward bloody stone paths and I'll drop down onto the flat so I can walk a little bit faster and more comfortably and e feel easy so I'm not going to fall over. Right, so you can see the, the banks of the river just through the trees there because this is where you're going to start going down gently which I love, I love to get the end of these, this tree line off these awkward pathways. Right, so you can see Gunner Side Guild is down there to the left as well, about 50 to 60 feet down.
Right, so where these roots are, this is where you start going down slowly but surely, gently, and going down and along. And then you go to those two big, short, thick railway sleepers across the, the stream to help you get across. The brook. Right, this is an awkward bit here, no. We've got to step down between um, roots and boulders. So you've got to keep a hold when you're stepping down. Yeah, this is it. Like I say, can you imagine when this is all wet and everything's slippy? The rocks and the, the tree roots. So I'll lean over to the right, just give myself a bit of support while I'm dropping down easy. That's what you've got to do. Right, more awkward bits over these slabs and stones. So you know when you're coming back the way, when you get over the little railway stoop, I see you now, you're going to come, come to this bit here. Where it's awkward as hell, when it's been raining especially. That slab's moving under my feet. Right. Right, so there's a little stream running down to my left. And this is where, that's where the, the wooden sleepers um, take you over. Take her across a little stream. Further along. Right. Oh. Right, thank God for that. Right, so there's the real bus sleep, that's just there, 50 yards. So you use them to get across this little brook, and then you go through a gap in the wall, and then you've got to climb up and go through a spring loaded gate to get on the opposite side of the wall to go on along forward. I know this um, path and route like the back of my hand because I've done it so many times now. But it's, it's, it's one of these areas that you just never get sick of. Especially when it's, it's like if you come when it's been raining and the streams that run down the hill further up there, uh, they come down step after step after step and it all turns white water. We're running fast down the hill. It's lovely. Perfect for taking pictures. Right, so here they are, like I say, the thick, short um, rail sleepers to get across this little brook. And there's your gap in the wall. And then the gate's just up there to the right. Right, so I can't see if there's anybody around, so I'm gonna have a quick tinkle. I'll probably come across other people when I get to the far end where the ruins are, where you could do the camping at the Blakethwaite um, mining ruins. That's the, that's the main area where everybody camps. Right, through this gap in the wall. Right, getting through this um, turnstile gate high up in the wall. This is the kind of thing where I'd struggle for to do if I had Bear with us on, the, on his leader. Because I can't take him off to push him through because he would run after the sheep the, out of curiosity to see what they are. So I, kinda, I couldn't take him on his lead. And um, I kind of get him back on in a hurry. Now when Jimmy and I first come here, we made the mistake of going through that gap there and started going along the wall on this side. 
And then when you get the far side, it's all barbed wire fencing. So I had to double buck along here and go through the, the gap in the wall here, through the, the turnstile gate here. Right. Oh, here you go. Right. What I find the easiest thing to get through these gates and all this, push the gates wide open so the the rest against the wall on the spring so it allows you to get through the gap easier right so i'm on flat land now so i can do a bit of a, a sprint or a spurt if you like now i don't know if you've been taking any notice of um the sky lately but um let's just say airplanes and let's just say aerosol cans and then you start understanding where i'm getting bringing the point to but then again there's that many people don't look up because they're too busy looking down in their mobile phones and that's another deliberate thing about them one it's just it's to stop with communicating which is done because everybody's sitting like in restaurants and that, nobody talks doctor surgeries waiting rooms nobody talks because they're looking in the phone and playing about games and getting crinked neck looking done constantly Right, this is all usually swamped and it's constantly like this as well. So you've got to use the bricks to step across. Or if you've got good books on, just wade through it. Right, there's, there's a lot of them flat, the rocks, so you can step on the flat ones. Oh, before it's just gone in deep mud shit slip off that one my balance is shite whoa one sec whoa man so that's my boot covered in black soft mud and water it's a good job they're waterproof Right, drag us through this grass, wash it all off. See, once again, I'm right-handed. This is the only hand I can use, so if I was going that way, I could hold on the wall and step over the, um, the flat boulders without falling over into the soft mud. But walking that way, I couldn't use my left hand or my right hand, there's nothing to hold on to. So hence, my boot is covered in soft mud and water. So I just got to keep dragging it through long grass and it starts to wash it off. Right, so I'll be coming up to another awkward gap in a wall where it's very, very thin. And it's a high step as well, so you've got to step up and turn literally sideways to get through it. And if you're one of these fat people that's been eating too many uh, donuts, you'll be struggling. Right, let's just take the time to stop and have a look around now and point my camera up to the hills. So, sheep on the loose. So if I brought Bay and I let him off his lead temporarily to get through that gate, he'd be off running over here to go and investigate them and there's um, lambs at the far side. So no, definitely not. That's why I've left him at home for this um, journey out. Quite rightly so. That's the thing, that's the beauty you see when you know where you're going and you know what you're going to be up against. First bit of stream, I come across a lot to dip my boot in and just swish it backwards and forwards to get all the, the loose wet mud off my boot.
But um, back there was a perfect example of um, how my um, balance affects me. We I fell over, I kept falling off the rocks and put my foot down in bloody deep muddy water. Right, this is awkward as hell, this, this gap in the wall. It's, I mean, I can only turn my boot round. If I to turn around and drop down. So. Oh. So I'll have a big step down and all on this side. Right. I'm going for that. Right, through the next spring load of gate. And then go along to the... Um, slag heaps. And then we've just got one last section of through the trees at the far end there. You can see loads of holes in the ground where the rabbits have been building their warrens. And this is where you've got nice open views of the, the gill. So obviously it's more spectacular when it's been lashing down the rain and the whole river is full of water racing along. So the, the road that you, you take going along or if you wanted to go back from the ruins and go back to Gunnerside, it goes above, it's a, they're above the, this tree line. It's a proper stone track, you can, I mean, vehicles drive along it. So if you want, if you're not going there because you've clambered and um, done a long walk and you want the easier route, you can just go back that side at the top and just follow the stone track all the way back to Gunnerside. But obviously this is the mostly scenic view where you're close to the river all the time. I've been here in sleet and snow, um, in winds, freezing cold, but I've been well wrapped up with thick jackets on, um, balaclava up to my bloody nose, keeping the cold wind off my face. Right, so basically instead of all green that you're looking at now, when I did it, it was like half, half green and half white with snow. And then as the day progressed, it got warmer and warmer. So the, the snow that was on the green was starting to melt. So it was all going half white, half green. And I had loads of photographs of that. But like I say, lost them all now because of 